by any chance. No, not at all. You do? What do you What do you use? Just out of curiosity. Like I mean, we pretty much set it up like this, except we got two loops on the dump stack. Okay. Hundred foot. Uh, yes, sir. About okay. two hundred feet. Uh, hundred foot here, hundred foot there. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So this is set up as a typical cross slice. We got a two stack. We got a triple stack, which is what we have on our engines. We got a single stack. If for some reason you guys want to see a single stack, we could load a single stack. The nice thing about this load is it can be loaded a bunch of different ways. You can load it with nozzle on the bottom like a Minuteman. You can flip it on top. Um, there's a lot of different variations. The bundle itself can be built several different ways, but as far as it deploys, it's pretty much the same and super simplistic. And what you'll see when you go to the Gustin pack is the Gustin pack, although it's a totally different pack, it's loaded in a different way, it deploys virtually identical to this. So they're both very user-friendly friendly packs that can be used together, okay? So what we're gonna do is we'll, we're just gonna start here at the host bed, demonstrate it, and we're gonna go straight into repetition. Because we've been trying to get as many reps as we can, and it's been, it's been difficult having to explain it, so we're gonna do it all in one. So, uh, one of you guys want to volunteer, and then we're just going to walk in. Come on, through. Now, before we get there, a couple things to notice is we have a loop, right? Loops about the midsection of this 100-foot thing. I'm a big advocate for big loops, at a minimum this, this big, in, in my opinion. I like them big because I like the ability to put your gloved hand through it. I like the ability for it's easily identifiable. Also, if you're dealing with height issues like we've dealt with some of the engines that we have, by doing that and over-exaggerating it kind of helps bring the profile down. But above all, it's big, it's easy to identify, it's easy to get your hand into. If it's like this, it just becomes a little bit more problematic, right? So, we have basically a one and two man deployment. The way we set up in our department, the way we try to train our people is the driver is the default second guy, unless it's a simple stretch. So how do we define a simple stretch? Anything with less than two pinch points. If you have anything about two pinch points or greater, especially if the pinch points are critical, here's an example. Going through that Tahoe to the right, going around that truck. We would consider those some pretty critical pinch points. If you had to do it by yourself, although you could do it, you're going to face some challenges and have to come back and forth. I'm the driver. I'm going to help you get past that, and I'm going to get back to the rig and do whatever my next priority is. Where we work, our priorities are simple. We put three lines on the ground within, within seconds or minutes of each other. The primary, the backup, and then a third line goes to a part of the fire ground that has the highest probability for external fire spread. That's the way we do it. Whatever it is in your department, uh, what the priority is for the drivers, and they can go back and do that, right? So we're going to have you guys doing two-person stretches just because we give us more of a chance for everybody to put their hands on it, right? If it was a one person, it would be simple. I'd put it on my shoulder. I'd kind of clear the bed a little bit. I'd reach, I'd grab this. I'd deploy it like a typical flat load. Pretty basic, right? Two-person, he's going to grab it. I'm going to come and go, right? So if it's a forward stretch, it's real simple. Pop, pop, pop. I reach down, grab a coupling, a nozzle, I'm walking towards the door. What I want to avoid doing is walking back like this, right? If I'm walking back like this and I'm trying to do it, where's my back facing? Here. How much can change in 20 seconds? A lot can change in 20 seconds, right? So I'm going to want to pick it up and keep my head towards the building, looking back and making sure it's good, right? That's a tough adjustment if you're not used to doing that. Where we work for years, the nozzle always went to the door. So anytime the nozzle gets the door, they're making adjustments to doing this stop and short, which is tougher than to do. If you're going to do a forward stretch, you have enough real estate stop way short. I would rather stop way short and try to get the hose up and get too far up and then get up there and realize I've got a bunch of hose I've got to go back and fix, right? If I'm going to go back and fix hose, I'm going to the purpose of the forward stretch. Does that make sense? So with this being a forward stretch, I would simply... not be able to do a forward stretch between the cars, maybe complicated to make bushes in the way. If you have to operate in this little narrow corridor, you can do a split stretch. You can take that same thing, set the rack down just like you did, take those two big ears, one goes this way, one goes that way, two equal lengths. Anybody familiar with the triple split on triple layers by chance? 
Okay, well, I can't use that example now. But it's the same thing. You have the ability to use lateral space when you split it. So the three primary ways to stretch is the forward stretch, okay? Back stretch, take the ears back, or the split stretch where you take the ears lateral this way. Really the only time we're gonna do that is we're working on balconies, narrow walkways, there's obstructions that are preventing us from doing one of those two other stretches. That makes sense, everybody? Yes, sir. Cool. Um, let's just pull this back here real quick um, with the hook and we'll show you how to look. Bring the nozzle this way. Split the load this way, and then you come back to the door. The other example would be is maybe it's not a, maybe it's not a short setback on a house. How about a fence? How many like trailer homes, small homes? You have fences right in front. You pull up. You've got a 15 foot setback from the fence. You need to do that triple split to get it out to get it through the fence. Right. So that is the same concept as this here. You're just splitting the hose, and the way the hose is packed allows you to go both directions, so that you can equally split it just super easy, and it lines up. Perfect. And we'll do it. We go through this. We'll pull through a couple of them. Oh, um, yeah, let's go on to the side here. So, if you're using good hose, key combat ready, key FDMY spec, uh, true ID, some of those like that, they tend to be really thick and puffy, right? Key resistant. This is actually FDMY spec, but it's been used a lot. It's really broke in, and we're not flowing water, so it's nice and flat. In the event that you're using that hose, the easiest thing to do is you can get it to work so you don't have a, a pack that's this high on your shoulder. Just roll these into backwards donut rolls where the nail is outside and then build them from a roll because that just gets all the air and it makes it nice and tight. We're going to skip that for this you know, in an effort of saving time to get you guys wrapped around and roll it because the hose is pretty flat now. We don't have to do it. So the six foot hook is what we use to basically measure it up. There's a handful of different ways to do this. You can do a flat like this. You can do the, the, the nozzle an extra 18 inches to wrap around and attach it to it. There's a handful of different ways. We do it this way because this is the best way it fits on our apparatus. So we measure the six foot there. Jake's gonna stop it just at the bail. He's gonna stop it at the bail because we have a height issue with our, our, our uh, hose beds. So we need to reduce the height. So by not putting it over top of that bale reduces about an inch to a two inches of height on that side of the bundle and allows it to fit into the hose bed that we, we use on our apparatus. We're gonna do what's called two longs and one short, which means I'm gonna do two flakes that are short down here. His flakes are gonna stay the same the whole time. Once I've done two, I'm gonna do a long. This is where my ears come in. Do a nice decent size here. Now I'm back to my two shorts again. First step to a successful stretch is just building a nice tight pack and hose load. So keep it nice and neat. We're gonna want our nozzle, we're gonna want our coupling right up there, right? So it's gonna fall somewhere. As long as it's on that third of the load, we're good. Whether it's really close or back, we just wanna avoid stacking it on top of the nozzle. Again, I'm doing my second short here. I'm going to my long, two short, one long again, equal length of ears. Watch a twist. Finish it off. And again, we're going to want to leave a tail. So we're probably just gonna strap it here and leave that tail, or I'll tell you what, we're gonna keep it simple and just do this. Tail may be a little longer, but I'd rather have it longer and grab it. If it's too short and I can't grab it, I'm gonna have to sit it down to disconnect it, right? So we're gonna go ahead and move this out of the way. The straps, again, these are kind of a pain in the butt because they're longer. Tabs on the same side. No matter which way you do them, you wanna make sure they're the exact same way, and you wanna start on one side of the pack and come to the other. If I, we're fighting it together, you're gonna to have a pack that's doing this. 
we're going to start on Jake's side. I'm just going to work with him. Let's keep it nice and tight. hose to kind of pinch it like that, it just helps mm -hmm. kind of get some leverage to tighten it up. And that's it, super simple. The only thing we could probably do a little better is we could probably move this, we could capture that nozzle a little bit closer, and that just keeps that nozzle from swinging and where you don't want it to hit you. The other, other option of this that you'll see, and we can do it if you want, this nozzle will be 18 inches, and when we finish it off, we wrap the nozzle, and it's on top here. What that does is it gives you a nice loop to pull from. We we don't do it because we can't do the height in our beds, but they're both very very good. Just the reason it works best for you. All right. Other side. You notice we're loading it with a nozzle on the bottom like a Minuteman load. The main reason we do that, if you look up here, one, it's super easy to connect. You don't have to fight with it and run it down the side. It reduces the overall width of the load, not running it down the side. It attaches, it's clean. Once we get it set up, I can put my eyes on it really quickly and make sure that it's correct. It's not confusing. And then it just peels off easy. And it's super easy to load. Why is that important? I had a one of our senior captains, when we went to this load, he came back, he's one of the guys who was kind of, he wasn't in the favor of it at first, but he started using it. And then he got convinced, he remember him telling me, because you know, we're gonna train a lot more of this. I'm like, what? Why are you gonna train more of this? He goes, to be honest with you, it's easy to load. The triple was really hard to load because of the way our hose bed, we can, we can pull this and load it within a matter of 10 minutes, because we're gonna train a lot more on it. I was like, oh, okay, good. Well, that makes sense, right? Super easy. All right, sorry, there's a lot of information very quickly. Any questions? All right, half you guys can come with me on this load. Half you guys can go with Jake on this load. And we're just going to put reps in until we rotate you guys with the gust attack. Does that like the plan? All right, so I need a nozzle man and a fireman for this one here. We're going to let them deploy real quick. That way we'll have space. Yeah. Who's going to go first? Hey, we'll just, uh, we'll go to the, we'll go to the side, Jake. Okay. You're going to go right? Or... All right, hold up. We're going to go this way. Yeah, same load is just uh, go. three wide instead of two wide. Oh. Too far. So when you throw the pack out, you got it yeah. on the other side. So you just flip it real quick before you unbundle it. Just flip the whole pack. There you go. All right. Now remember, you're looking at your objective. So face the objective with your nozzle and coupling as you move forward. Red, you're good. There you go. If this twisted like that, once you pull it, it'll, it'll paint itself out. You got here, you've got a little bit there, but that's easily managed. So if you charge that, you don't have any problem at all. Okay. And like I said, it's we typically always kind of overshoot that point. I would much rather drop it too far back because stretching the line forward is doing nothing but straightening straightening it out for you. 
paper, you know what I mean? Unless you do need to clear some other obstruction or something like that moving forward that you need to get the bundle passed. But again, that's another advantage of this is if you had all kinds of obstructions there, you're just moving this entire bundle past all that and then stretch it. Right. All right. So you're shooting for 25 feet before the door. 45 is typically what I would like to drive back, which gives me plenty of space so that I pull it, I know I'm pulling slack and I've got good straight uh, lengths of hose out behind me that um, you know I can see and I know we're straight with no kinks and stuff. But yeah, typically about 40, 45 feet. And then just kind of even with the uh, inside of the clip. Um, well, or you just, you just put that spot like that. Like I said, you just use it for a guide, so however, but just do, do your fold right there on the inside of the house. And then you can just twist the, the, you know, the nozzle around once you've done it. Bring that same spot. Uh -huh. Now, this is part if you want. You could, you could offset those just slightly so that they stay tighter. <coughs> Two shorts, big long loop, two shorts, loop, and then you usually end up with one, maybe two more, depending on the length. It's gonna be a longer one. Said, sometimes your tail ends up in different space. I found hose like two and a half feet longer than what it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? It's like 52 and a half. But, but uh, just kind of play with what you got. Or maybe switch that nozzle section out with a different hose you know um, works out the better length. Yes, sir. Just try and get this to, to land. Like I said, we're cheating because the strap's too long, but try and get it to land so it is on top, so it's an obvious, okay. uh, yes, sir. you know, that it's sticking out. So one of the things is like, say, if, uh, if we know that this hose, when it goes into the bed, is uh, gonna be left shoulder carry because of the way it's facing towards us, we, we could lay that side facing that way so I know that if it's on my left shoulder, those tags are to the outside so I know how to lay it down. Um, or preferably, honestly, really flip it so that those will be on the inside to you because naturally you're gonna drop it like that and then it's already facing up. So those are like little details, but again, it shaves seconds off of you know what you're doing. 